What is going on, YouTube? Welcome back to Fireside Rangers. I'm your host, Eric Wilson. Today, joined by my co-host, Anthony Rivardo. Today, we're going to be doing a little bit of a deep dive into the potential roster that we're looking at for the upcoming Eastern Conference Final Series against the Florida Panthers. We know that the, the lineup that we had against the Hurricanes played quite well, but there has been some developments moving forward as we approach Wednesday, the start of the Eastern Conference Finals. Philip Heedle officially skated with the team, so it's looking like he might be a full go-ahead. But at the same time, Blake Wheeler was 100% medically cleared earlier today. And we know we all know that Matt Rempe is out there, potentially could be in the lineup, could potentially not be. So we're going to give what we think might be the perfect lineup heading into this series. But before we do that, make sure you guys like, subscribe, ring that bell so you don't miss notification if you're watching us on Apple or Spotify. Be sure to give us a five-star review. Um, leave your thoughts on who you would want to see play against the Panthers down in the comment section below. And lastly, be sure to follow us on all of our social media platforms at Fireside Rangers on Instagram X and TikTok. But before we really get into it, Anthony, my friend, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. A few things before we dive into the conversation about this perfect lineup that I got to get off my chest. I haven't been on here since the Rangers officially advanced. You know, I know you gave my statement uh, to people, I'm pretty sure. Hopefully I did, you yeah. delivered that. There we go. Love to see it. But now I get to actually kind of talk about it. Listen, well-fought series. Chris Kreider put the team on his back, put his freaking jersey in the Raptors tomorrow. Like, what a legendary performance. All of that stuff remains true. And I know that's probably been beat endlessly like a drum already on this show and many others. But I do think that you have to give a lot of credit to Peter Laviolette, the way that he got these boys to fight through all that adversity and Find the way to win. And if you do look at the advanced numbers, not just shots, shots on goal, expected goals, the Rangers' high-quality shots defeated the Hurricanes' high-quantity shots. And I think that's really been the name of the game for Laviolette's team, is not forcing it, holding on to the puck, waiting for the right opportunities, which I know is something that we've talked about a whole lot here on this show over the past several weeks with the postseason going on. It's the Rangers are just so good at getting their stars in position to make plays and just waiting for those high quality opportunities and then capitalizing, not taking a high quantity of opportunities. It's the high quality one. So I just wanted to make that point as my main takeaway from that series against Carolina. I think it's a really important takeaway to have and to keep in mind as we go into this next series against a really good Florida Panthers team. Now, the other piece of info that I wanted to drop Eric and I are going to at least one of those games. We are super pumped. It's going to be in person. Again, follow Fireside Rangers on social media because absolutely best believe you're going to see some of some content of Eric and I at the stadium getting hyped, getting jazzed up at uh, Sunrise, Florida at that game. It's going to be a lot of fun. So I'll just say stay tuned to that. And uh, I just can't wait to go to the game. It's going to be a lot of fun. Hopefully the uh, Blue Shirts get a win while we're in person. I think that we bring some good luck around. I hope so. You know, that's what we're hoping for. But yeah, I'm doing good today, and I'm really excited to be talking about another playoff series for the New York Rangers, and thank God nothing went to absolute crap and no mayhem dropped. So just excited to go ahead and dive into this, Eric. Yeah, I mean, I will say the Rangers are undefeated when I am in person for a playoff game. They're they're one for one. Um, <laughs> in, in the 2016 playoffs, I was at game four of the Eastern Conference Court. Eastern Conference quarterfinals against the Montreal Canadiens, where they won two to one. Um, and, you know, it's looking like we might be going to another game for hopefully another win. I know Jimmy VC scored the game winning goal in that game that I went to. And he's, he's back on the team now. So we'll be going to game four against Florida. And then really the only other option would be game six. But, you know, it's not going to go to six. It'll be over by then according to my official predictions that I dropped in yesterday's episode, which you missed, Tony. I said Rangers in five. Um, I'm getting bold with this one. The confidence is high. But, you know, you, you mentioned Peter Laviolette earlier and how phenomenal he coached this team throughout the second round. And when we talk about who's going to be in the lineup, who's going to be out of the lineup, he is the man who's going to make that decision. So at the end of the day, we do trust him and whatever his final judgment is. But before we even know what that is, here's our judgment, which is questionably wrong a lot <laughs> but sometimes we get it right the first player i want to talk about though is philip Heedle. you know looking at the practice lines from today philip Heedle skated on that third line alongside um alex wenberg and capo caco which means that during practice will cooley was down on the fourth line so Heedle basically took cooley's place and Heedle also was skating alongside the second power play unit so 
Two days out from game one of the Eastern Conference Finals, all signs are pointing towards Philip Heedle, good to go for game one. Um, I'd be shocked if he skated with them today and then did not play a few nights later. It looks like they're really gearing up for it. And honestly, I'm very happy. I think when Heedle made his debut in the second round after going months and months and months without playing, it was, it was a great sign to see. He, he didn't score any points, but he looked really well, had a really couple of good chances. And then after that, you know, he experienced another illness, still unconfirmed if it's related to his previous concussion injury or not. But based off of the very vague and few reports that we have, we know that Heedle is 100% good to go. I think LaViolette knows well enough to not play Heedle unless he was fully confident that he would be at his best performance ability possible. So when it comes to Philip Heedle, do I think he's going to play? 1,000% yes. Am I confident in how well he's going to perform? I give him like a solid like 90%. I think he's going to do really good. The only thing I might be fearful of is if this previous injury comes back again. But like I said, I have trust in Peter Laviolette. I don't think he'd play him unless he knew that there were zero risks at hand. So I think Heedle's going to play, and I think he's going to play great. I love to see him on that third line. I think it's a really big boost to this roster. But I'll pass it off to you, Tony, on how you're feeling about Heedle potentially rejoining the lineup here. I'm excited about it. I know that obviously before he made his return, we had a lot of conversations about uh, do we want that to happen? Do we think it would be a good idea to break up what really felt like a perfect lineup already? I think that we saw the pros and the cons of having Matt Rempe in the lineup throughout the Hurricane series. Uh, and I think that we saw the pros and cons of changing it up every now and then. And I think the main takeaway that we should have, which is the one that I kept repeating is whatever Laviolette does, we just have to trust at this point, right? I said that I didn't want to see Hedl in the lineup, but if Laviolette makes a decision to put him in the lineup, I fully support it and I'm confident that it's going to be the right choice. And I think that ended up being true. When he was in the lineup, he provided a spark. So I'm excited for him to get back in the lineup, continue to provide that spark, and hopefully continue to play well for the Rangers. I, I do want to throw in, though, I found this quote from Philip Hedl about potentially playing in this upcoming series. I think you're really going to like this, Eric. He said, I didn't just, uh, sorry, let me restart because I misspoke. He said, I didn't join to just watch the guys from the stands and have a vacation in New York and Florida. I love that quote. Dope quote. He's not here for vacation. Heedle's here to play. I think it's going to be exciting. He is going to play, in my opinion. I'm like 100% confident in that. And again, I trust in Laviolette to make the right decision. And I also now have come around to it. I think it is the right decision, I think. Philip Heedle, first of all, just a playoff performer, you know, in his career history. Kid line back in, what was that, 22? Uh, you know, he's uh, always been a playoff performer, and I think that it's going to be really exciting to see him back in the lineup, and I'm hopeful that he gets back in there ASAP. Yeah. Some might say that Heedle didn't come this far to just come this far, you know. Um, mm -hmm. But like, like you said, I think we're, we're both in agreement. He's going to play. He's going to play great. But I think the biggest question mark that we have right now is Blake Wheeler, you know, another guy who was ruled out for the remainder of the season. But at this point, we're deep into the playoffs. He's made a miraculous recovery earlier this morning, Monday, May 20th. Um, he said that he was 100% 100 ready to go in any capacity. Now, the question is, should the Rangers use him? Because, you know, I, I know there are, there are a few players in the bottom six that might not be the most – well fit for this series against the Florida Panthers. I know Jimmy VC is a big one where the, the Panthers are like a big, rough playing team. VC is a smaller guy, a little older, um, might not be, might, might not have the most well equipped skill set to go against a team like the Panthers. Whereas Blake Wheeler might have a little bit more playoff experience, another bigger guy. But honestly, to me, when I look at Blake Wheeler, Anyone who's followed this channel throughout the entirety of the season, they know I was always very critical of Wheeler. I think he's too old. He skates too slow. And while I think he might be a good backup to have, barring any potential injuries coming against this tough Florida Panthers team, I would I would personally rather not see him thrown into the lineup over a guy like Jimmy VC. I know um, Kako is another player that has received the same criticisms as VC where he might not be a good fit against the Panthers, but I'll defend Kako to the end of this earth. I, I think, I think the, the, that part of the lineup needs to stay the same and Blake Wheeler should be a nice, healthy scratch and, you know, fingers crossed if anything happens to anyone, that's maybe when you throw Wheeler in and, and like he, he's, he's had moments where he's shined 
and I've like bitten my own tongue and said like, okay, I take it back. Like Wheeler still can produce in this league at the age that he's at, but you know, he's not like Philip Heedle, who's a young guy who can just come back from six months of not playing and just look like nothing's ever happened. It might take Wheeler a bit to adjust to playing again full time. I think he's a great locker room guy. You can still keep him in the locker room, even if he doesn't play in a single game. So in, in my personal opinion, I would start the series off not having Blake Wheeler in the lineup, but I don't know how you feel about it, Tony. I feel similarly. Again, if Laviolette decides to put him in the lineup, I'm just going to support it. My my faith in Laviolette is almost like a blind faith at this point. <laughs> like whatever decision he makes, I'm just going to trust. But I think he's earned that trust is, is kind of my point. It's not like it's just blind faith just to have it. I just think everything that he's done this season, he's found a way to make every move that he's made pay off. And he's just been tremendous for this team. So again, if he decides to put Blake Wheeler in the lineup, all right, who am I to judge him and say that's a bad move? I can't really count on more than one hand how many bad moves Laviolette really made this season. Like how many truly bad moves that terribly affected the team. There haven't been many. He's been a great coach this year. So if he makes that decision, again, I'll be okay with it. Uh, but I am in the same boat as you. I don't necessarily want to see Blake Wheeler on the ice. I just think it's great that he's available for playing time he's available to go on the ice in case we need him to if there are any injuries it's great that we have him available and ready to go and ahead and play which is surprising because we didn't think that we would see any more Blake Wheeler this season so it's just great to have an extra reserve in the mix uh but that being said you called him a great locker room presence I think that's primarily what he is and what he provides I don't think he provides some tremendous amount of talent onto the ice at this stage in his career I think that we've all seen the videos of him celebrating with the team, dapping up all the players on their way to the locker room after clutch wins in the last series. Like that's what he really provides veteran mentorship and leadership and a true and tried hype man in the locker room. And that's valuable. And so again, having him available to play, having that depth, having an insurance and an emergency plan, all of that is really important. So I am grateful that Blake Wheeler is healthy. Also, just for him personally, I'm happy that he's healthy. But I'm in no rush to see him take the ice and get significant playing time. I don't think it's necessary. I don't think that he is an upgrade over anybody in the lineup necessarily. Not against this Florida team. And I just think that what he does best, it comes really off of the ice. So that's kind of my take on Blake Wheeler. Again, very happy that he's healthy. Just not in a rush to get him back on the ice. I'm in the same exact boat. And I think it's also important to remember that before he was a member of the New York Rangers, he was the captain of the Winnipeg Jets. So when we when we look at leadership guys and players who have a, an abundance of playoff experience, Blake Wheeler is one of those guys. And like, like you said, we've seen the videos of the Rangers literally sprinting off of the ice, giving him high fives, dapping him up and everything like that. He's a great guy to be around, but on the ice, might not be as impactful as he is in the locker room. So although I am, just like you said, very happy to see him healthy and ready to go, I, I'd be more than okay not seeing him play again for the remainder of the season, as we were told a couple of months ago. But so far, what we've locked in on is Heedle in, Wheeler out. There's one more player I want to talk about. Everyone's fan favorite, Colt legend, Matt Rempe. Um, I've been a big Rempe defender throughout the entirety of his short NHL career so far. But if I'm being completely honest, I think heading into this series against Florida, I personally, I would want to keep Rempe out. And I know like the, the Florida Panthers have a lot of bruises on their team. Like Matthew Kachuk, he's the type of guy that's going to go after your players. And you, you kind of want a guy like Rempe to counter that and shut him down. But when I look at all four lines on both teams, I, I think the fourth line without Rempe on it is catastrophically better than Florida's. You know, I mean, the Rangers' top six is going to stay the same. It's going to be Kreider, Zabanjad, Rosovlik, Panarin, Trocek, Lafreniere. That's not changing. We're really just – this is a bottom six episode. And, you know, as we talked about earlier, I would love to see the third line consisting of Philip Hedl, Alex Wenberg, and Capo Caco. I think that third line – is phenomenal, which would then make the Rangers' fourth line Will Cooley, Barclay Goudreau, and Jimmy Vesey. 
And I think that trio of Cooley, Goudreau, and VC is a lot better than Florida's fourth line of Ryan Lomberg, Kevin Stunlin, and Nick Cousins. You know, like a lot of guys there who are a little bit older, don't have much playoff experience, and that much skill. So as much as I love Rempe and I know what he's able to contribute to this lineup and how well fit he would be against this Florida team, just physicality wise, I think keeping him out of the lineup just creates a trio that would be much better than one possible player having an outstanding performance. So in my opinion, it might be controversial I can see the hate all coming already from all my Rempe fans out there. But if I'm Peter Laviolette, I'm, I'm, I'm holding him out. And just based on practice lines, it looks like it's going to be that way too. But I mean, I, I, that's my breakdown of it. And I understand why Rempe might not be at least in the start of this series. Yeah, I want him to get some playing time at some point because I think that the series will call for it. I think, like you said, there are some bruisers on Florida. And for that reason alone, you're going to want Rempe out there at some point in this series. But I do agree that I'm not necessarily eager for him to get the start from game one. Uh, And obviously, when he was initially pulled from the lineup in this last series, he was pulled from the lineup for Philip Hedl. Again, we kind of discussed maybe they shouldn't do that before it happened. But once it happened, we were like, okay, that was the right decision. Hedl looks great. So if that's, again, the one-for-one swap that we're talking about, I mean – I support Philip Hedl being in the lineup as long as he's fully healthy. And again, Hedl sounds eager to get on the ice. The Rangers seem like they're very intent on getting him on the ice. So I'm all in on Philip Hedl over Matt Rempe. But again, I think that we'll see some Rempe at some point in the series just because of the nature of it, especially if it does end up going deep into seven games or six games. I think that it, it that increases the likelihood that we get Rempe out there. Uh, but you know, Rempe comes with his flaws. He comes with his strengths and his weaknesses. And I think that some of his flaws make him a liability at times on the ice. And the last thing that the Rangers need going into the Eastern Conference Finals is a player that they might feel like is a liability. You know, I don't want Laviolette to feel handcuffed in any way and feel like, all right, I got this guy that I can put on the ice, but only for four minutes at a time or four minutes of total in a game. Like, I want him to be able to utilize all the players at his disposal and not feel handcuffed. So there are other contenders that I would rather have in the lineup than Rempe, even though he does provide incredible spark, incredible energy, uh, incredible physicality. There are, again, there are strengths to his game. But I think that you and I are in the same boat that we'd rather not put him on the ice. But if we have to put him on the ice, we're not necessarily upset about it. Yeah, he's, he's a great guy to have as a healthy scratch just in case, one, there's an injury, or two, you really need to shake out the momentum in a series. But I, we're, we're pretty much in agreement, like you said. Keep in Philip Heedle, um, keep out Wheeler and Rempe, at least for just right now. Um, you know, I know there's a lot of big, like like I said, like cult fans of Rempe who will want him in the lineup every single game no matter what but honestly as much as i love rempy if it comes down between him and philip Hedl, i'm taking philip Hedl 10 out of 10 times like right then and there so realistically when we talk about the potential perfect lineup for the conference finals we're gonna go Kreider, zabanajad roslovic panarin trocek lafreniere Hedl, wenberg kako cooley goudreau vc and then obviously the, the defense and goaltending, but whatever. This is just an offensive episode. But um, well, I will I will say on that note on the defense, what are your pairings? You know, like we we don't have to fully dive into it and break it down, but maybe quickly just you went through the whole lineup. That was pretty good, pretty impressive. Yeah, I, uh, go through the go through the defensive pairings. Like I know that obviously there was a little bit of a change up. Truba and Miller reunited for Game Six. They won Game Six. Uh, but did you like that? Do you think they should stick with that? Do you want them to go back to uh, what they had before that? You know, like what's your Honestly, thoughts? Honestly, what I'll say is as much as I hate the Miller-Truba pairing, it's kind of like flip-flopped. And, like, if you remember, like, halfway through the series, um, the, uh, halfway through the regular season, Miller was playing really bad, and, like, Truba was kind of, like, saving him. But at this point, I fully believe that Jacob Truba is the worst hockey player on this team. Now, I, I love him as captain. Let me clarify that. I love him as captain, but I think as far as skill and performance has gone, Jacob Truba has been our worst skater at the time. 
And at the same time throughout the playoffs, I think Miller has been the best. So, you know, like it used to be Gustafson and Truba. That was a train wreck. Just two bad defensemen together. So as much as I hate it, I think you kind of need to have Miller and Truba play together because now it's going to be Miller saving Truba's ass every single game. So you, you look at the practice lineup from the day. It was Zach Jones and Fox, just because Lingren was dealing with something. He'll be fine for game one. But so Lingren, Fox, Miller, Truba, Gus Schneider. It's the way it's been the majority of the season, and I'm, I'm fine with it. It's what won us a President's Trophy. And, you know, that Gustafson, Schneider, bottom pair, it, it raises some alarms, but at the end of the day, I think Schneider – outside of a few standout terrible moments has overall played really good and they don't get that much ice time. So it's uh, I'm okay with it. Yeah. And I agree with you. I think all your points, I don't want to just continue to agree with everything you say and repeat all your points. So I'll just say that I do agree. And I like the points that you made and uh, we're in the same boat here that the defensive core right now uh, should stay the way that it is, but you know, if they struggle again, just revert back to what you had and maybe just keep going back and forth until one of them clicks. I think that's really the only thing that you can do. It's not like we have an excess of depth here uh, in the defensive core. So what we've got is kind of just what we've got. And we just need Jacob Truba not to uh, dive head first into any players' heads and get suspended. We just need him to be a good leader and hopefully play some better defense. I See, I, th- I think that hit that he missed, it goes kind of hard. What I really need him to do is just not fall. Like in game six at the beginning, when we were in the it's so over phase of the game, like he was just falling. Like like people just skate around him because he would just be on his face on the floor. I'm like, get up. Like you know how to skate. Like I can skate better than that. Pay me $8 million and I'll skate better than that. Like I promise you. <laughs> but I don't know. So that's that, that's a really our ideal lineup heading into these conference finals. It is surely going to be one of the most entertaining series in like maybe of all time, honestly, both of these teams are so extremely skilled. And although my money will always be on the Rangers, I can honestly see this going either way. It's going to be a very long, hard fought series, hard fought series. Once again, um, just like it was against Carolina. But um, if you are a fan of the New York Rangers and you believe in them as much as I do, maybe this doesn't need to be the only episode you watch. Maybe you can just hit like, you could hit that subscribe button and maybe you'd even just ring that bell so you don't miss a notification. If you're watching us on Apple or Spotify, be sure to give us a five-star review. We shared our thoughts on our perfect lineup. Leave your thoughts down in the comment section below. Lastly, as we said earlier, please be sure to follow us on all of our social media platforms at Fireside Rangers on Instagram, X, and TikTok. We post daily Rangers content, updates, news, reels, all that good stuff. And plus, everyone over there on the social medias will get a behind-the-scenes viewing of what me and Tony experience at game four and potentially game six of the Eastern conference finals. So it'll be a little fun over there these next couple of days <laughs> while the Rangers are in town, but to everyone who joined us throughout today's episode, I do hope you enjoyed, have a good one and let's go Rangers.